Welcome to today's PDAC webinar, Mining Investment Funds Made in Quebec, which is the 10th of the 16 sessions in the FASCON series. My name is Michael Barassa. I'm a partner in FASCON's Toronto office and a member of the PDAC program committee. This is FASCON's 11th annual PDAC seminar series. This year, we are doing it virtually like PDAC itself, which started today. We have people joining us today from all over North and South America, from the UK, Europe, South Africa, and Australia. We would also like to welcome those of you joining us on YouTube Live and LinkedIn Live. Before we begin, I have a few housekeeping notes. For the online survey at the end of the webinar, please click the survey link beneath the video to fill in our survey. Your input is greatly appreciated. For questions during the webinar, if you have a question, please type your question into the chat box beside the video. Today's panel will do their best to answer all of the questions. For technical support, if you require that, please click the tech FAQs or tech support chat, which is located under the question chat box. And for materials, the bios for today's speakers can be accessed from the materials button under the video player. And now I'll turn things over to Frank Mariage, a securities, corporate law and mining law practitioner in our Montreal office to introduce and moderate today's panel. Thank you, Michael. Hello, everybody. Uh, maybe an introductory remark. Uh, you will notice that we have a speaker that is missing today. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Stéphane Poitras was not able uh, at the last minute to make, uh, to make this webinar. He deeply apologizes for this. Uh, obviously, it is a, what we call a force majeure. So again, his apologies, and uh, we'll make sure to, to, uh, to entertain you enough in, in, in his absence. Um, before I get into uh, to the weeds, as we say, uh, a few, if I'd like to introduce our federal panelists, which uh, I would, uh, first one is uh, Mr. Amio Chaquette from Investissement Québec. Bonjour, Amio. Uh, followed by Serge Cote of the Fonds de Solidarité des Travailleurs du Québec. Bonjour, Serge. Uh, Monsieur Paul Carmel, Président Directeur Général de SIDEX. Bonjour, Paul. Et finalement, Angelina Meta uh, de uh, Valor Mobilière Banque Laurentienne. Hello, everybody, and thank you for accepting my invitation. Greatly appreciated. Um, obviously, today we're talking about mining investment funds, uh, and the purpose of that is to explore what, what is this ecosystem that we have in Quebec that is really doesn't really exist anywhere else. Before we get into that, maybe a few remarks of what is mining in Quebec. Uh, as you know, uh, you know, on February 23rd, uh, the Fraser Institute released its uh, survey of, uh, of mining companies. Uh, relating, uh, you know, the, to the top and worst jurisdictions in the world for mining. This year, we are very happy with the result. Quebec came in sixth place as the most attractive, uh, one of the most attractive jurisdictions in mining for mining investment. Uh, we were all know um, another province in Canada, Saskatchewan, came in second. Congratulations to Saskatchewan, obviously. Uh, but um, we're very proud of our sixth place. And uh, a few, a few, a few numbers for you. There, right now, there are 21 active mines in Quebec, eight of which are gold mines. And there are five mines that are on care and maintenance and that are looking to be, to be restarted. We're talking about virtually close to 50,000 jobs. Uh, last year, uh, in, uh, uh, in investments in mining complexes for infrastructure and maintenance, et cetera, there was close to just a bit over $2.3 billion that was invested in the province of Quebec. As for exploration and, and, and development of projects, uh, close to 600,000, um, 600 million, I'm sorry, that, were, that was invested. So put those two numbers together, we're talking about something close to $3 billion, $3 billion in investment in the province of Quebec related to mining. So obviously there has to be a structure that supports that. And that's one of the things we're going to explore today. It's the investment structure. Over the years, we've been fortunate enough, Quebec, to build this ecosystem of these various funds that I presented to you just a few minutes ago that will intervene in various stages of a project. And we're gonna to explore together how that came to be, how, you know, how, what are the opportunities to cooperate? And, uh, and we'll also hear the, the private, uh, the investment banking side of how, how they see that as an actor and how they, how, what role do they play with this sophisticated ecosystem? So let's get into them then. I guess my first question to our final panelists, and Paul, I think I'll direct it to you. I mean, you're a mining engineer by trade. You've been in the business for a long time. You worked in mines. Uh, you were CEO of a, of a gold company that had an active mine. Uh, you've been in the investment banking side, and now today you're, you're CEO of, 
of CDEX, which is a, a fund that, ex that uh, is active on the exploration side. So how do you explain that we got, how did we build this type of ecosystem over the years uh, in Quebec? How did we get here? What's your assessment? Um, uh, thanks for the question. It's an interesting one. And it's one that I've, uh, I've actually lived with, uh, with for my entire sort of 30 year career. Um, you know, to say that mining is important in Quebec and that we have good rocks here and that we have a, you know, a talented mining workforce uh, is true, but that's true for Ontario, it's true for BC, it's true for Saskatchewan, blah, blah, blah. So what, why in Quebec did we, you know, develop this, this financial infrastructure that we have, um, like you say, ecosystem. Um, like many things in life, there's really not one single reason, but one reason that I'll sort of highlight is, uh, is the presence of the Case of Depot, to be honest with you. I mean, when I, it's, it's, the Case has been active in mining for, for my 30 years that I've been in the business. And they developed a, a, they developed a talent very early on um, uh, of, of staffing up a, an important mining team. In the case. I mean, and it was with not just financial people, but people with geology backgrounds, mining backgrounds. Um, when I came into the business, uh, 89, 90, whatever, in Montreal in the financial business, I worked for Levesque Bobier as a mining analyst, but I was, I was being paid by the case. I mean, the case had a program mm -hmm. where you could be an analyst in a Montreal office with a technical background and the case would pay a big portion of your salary. Uh, and, you know, so that's how it started. Um, and, uh, um, you know, it, the case has been an incubator and a school for many people who went on to work for other Quebec institutions, other investment banks. Um, so it's kind of unique. And from that sort of blossomed our current ecosystem, in my opinion. And I'll tell you a little anecdote. Um, you know, even before I got into this business, you know, back in the mid 80s, the case had a mining team and they, uh, they identified uh, an up and coming company, which was called American Barrack. You know, and Barrack, American Barrack, it was just a junior, almost pr promote, you know, by Peter Monk and, and Bob Smith. Uh, and back then it was just like, a, you know, a heap leach operation in Nevada. And, you know, they, they studied it. And, and this is the case that they put in Montreal. I mean, they, they studied this and took on a big position in American Barrack. And American Barrick went on to become Barrick. They went through the Betsy development plan. They became the darling of the stock market. And if I remember looking through the proxy materials, the biggest uh, shareholder of, 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 of American Barrick back then was Horsham, which was Peter Monk's vehicle. But the second biggest bear shareholder was the case of the Oak, 16%. You know, so that speaks volumes how, you know, a, a Quebec pension plan could, could study a mining situation by a geologist his name will go nameless now but you know and and they took on a big position and and so from there they've always maintained a strong mining team and um and you know you had people everywhere from peter monk to bob freeland to all these guys coming to montreal they always went to came to visit the case of depot because they were such an important um you know important firm um and and just that committed big capital to mining. And when these, these managements came to Montreal, of course they'd visit everybody else, but they came to see the case. So they're not, it's not the only reason why Quebec created this, this current ecosystem that we have, but it's a darn big one in my opinion. And um, you know, it, um, it, kind of, it, it kind of grew from there. And, and from the case, you had the fall and you had, you had Investissement Quebec and you know, all of the smaller players developing this culture i guess and commitment to mining um so that's my take on it frank i mean um i've, I've lived it too i mean um you know i i worked 10 years not directly for the case but for case um sponsored mining funds sentient was one of them inquest was one of them um and without the case we we wouldn't have had a, a private equity mm -hmm. business in in, in in quebec and so um yeah, very interesting. And so, you know, yeah, other 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 provinces have, you know, uh, provincial pension funds, but they don't have um, the the sectorial expertise that the case does in mining. So I would I would say Quebec is is different in that respect. Okay, thanks, Paul. 
Listen, in my eagerness to get the debate going, I, I, I forgot an important part was to actually have you have each of you, rep, uh, you know, talk about your respective organizations that you represent here today, and 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 then we would get into the questions. So apologies for that, um, but uh, you know what we'll do? I think we're going to keep on with the uh, with that answer. And Paul, you'll have an opportunity later on, I think, to present CDEX in, in one of the questions that I have for you, but. Maybe I'll turn it over to Amu, uh, maybe uh, to go on Paul's uh, comments. And, you know, obviously IQ is a major player. Uh, maybe you could start a bit by talking about your fund and, and then uh, and continue on with the convert conversation. And Serge, I'll turn it over to you after. And then Angelina, we could, we could uh, talk about the Laurentian Bank. Amu? Well, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Frank. Uh, and thanks, Paul, for your, your, uh, your answer. It, I guess it, it's a good segue to introduce uh, IQ. Uh, thank you uh, for Faskin for uh, having us today uh, and uh, giving us uh, the opportunity to present uh, Investissement Québec. So Investissement Québec is a, uh, a government-owned entity. Uh, it's an economic development agency that has uh, two major roles. I guess that the, the, there's a role uh, is that is on the international side and the, it, as well we play uh, the role of the financial arm of the government of Quebec. So to fulfill our role, I think we have uh, uh, 12 offices abroad uh, from the IQ International Division. Uh, the inter International Division's role is to attract foreign direct investment and as well to support Quebec companies uh, for export. Uh, on the financial arm of, of the government of Quebec, uh, we have uh, a number of offices in Quebec, of course, and we have uh, close to 10, uh, 10 uh, 1,000 employees. Um, so for us, I guess we can support companies, uh, startup from, we have uh, a number of uh, funds that uh, support startup companies. And uh, we can support projects uh, up to operations as well. Uh, overall, uh, Investissement Québec manages $12 billion uh, in support uh, for uh, local businesses. And specifically for the mining industry, uh, it's Ressources Québec, the division for which I work. Uh, we manage uh, $1.6 billion. Uh, we can invest in debt and equity. Uh, from a pre-economic assessment up to uh, construction and, and uh, operation. As well, to support the uh, exploration uh, sector, uh, uh, we, uh, we have SOCAM, our subsidiary, which uh, manages a budget of $15 million uh, annually, and that supports projects uh, in the strategic and critical minerals and as well in traditional uh, minerals. So about half of the budget is uh, allocated to uh, the two sectors. Um, so I guess that sums it up uh, at, at this point, but we'll be happy to uh, answer any uh, questions uh, that uh, the attendants may have. Thank you. Thanks, Samuel. So, so what's your assessment in terms of uh... Paul's, uh, Paul said, obviously, the case uh, has, has played a big role uh, in terms of IQ and uh, what you how So how do you think that all this came to be that uh, we got this ecosystem now? I mean, you 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 intervene in specific spaces. Uh, and we'll touch upon that a bit later. But I mean, this is this is something that's developed over the last 30 or 40 years uh, with IQ being a major player. What's what's your assessment on why this came to be? Well, I guess uh, the governments and previous governments, whatever the color, have always been supportive uh, of the mining industry. So, uh, and uh, I was talking about SOCAM uh, earlier. Uh, SOCAM was uh, founded in the 1960s. So uh, it's been around for more than 60 years. And I guess at that point, uh, during the um, uh, Industrial Re Revolution in, in, in Quebec, I think the, the governments at that time uh, wanted to uh, uh, Quebec to, to play a bigger part in, in the mining industry and to uh, to develop a, a uh, I guess the expertise uh, here in Quebec uh, and uh, you know for for older uh, geologists uh, and uh, some mining engineers uh, I, I think uh, most of them uh, worked. Uh, Part of their time or their work life uh, uh, with SOCAM or um, 
And, and today, uh, at that point, SOCAM uh, initially uh, supported exploration projects, but uh, as well, they, they de developed them and operated them. Uh, and, and in 1996, um, I guess the, uh, the government uh, wanted to change a little bit the strategy of, of SOCAM and they uh, did a spin-off of some of their properties, which became the Cambia. So, uh, and, and now Cambia at that time had a big expertise and it went through it. I guess, like I said, we, the, the expertise in Quebec is now available and, uh, inter and internationally uh, recognized. So the, a lot of Quebecers uh, uh, are, are working uh, all across the world today. And um, so I think, that, that was the, the purpose at that time. And uh, I think it was be very beneficial for, for the industry and uh, Quebecers in mining. That's a very interesting point about SOCAM. I think we have a tendency to forget that. It's played a big role in Quebec. And, and obviously, as you know, uh, was the result that created Cambior that was after that purchased by IM Gold, I think in 2006. Uh, and Cambior and uh, SOCAM to this day is still a very active player. And you know, apparently a very, very good partner to have with uh, very good expertise on projects. But thanks, uh, I mean, that's, that's very interesting. So obviously we have the case EQ with, uh, and, and the creation of SOCAM, which is an exploration arm that helped kind of create those, this ecosystem. Let's turn it over to Serge now. Serge is uh, the director of investments in the mining space for Le, Le Fonds Solidarité des Travailleurs du Québec. Uh, so that's another interesting uh, piece of the puzzle of the uh, fond, the uh, fond FTQ's involvement, how it came to be as well. So, Serge, why don't you talk about the the, the fond, uh, introduce the fond to to our audience, and then maybe you, I'd love to hear your take on how how this ecosystem came to be uh, today. Yes, <clears throat> thanks, Frank, uh, and hello, everybody on the line. So, so the FAO is quite an interesting entity. It was created in 1983 by an initiative of the FTQ. And uh, <coughs> sorry, the, uh, the FTQ, as you may know, is the largest central labor body in Quebec. So it was something very, very innovative at the time. Uh, at, at, at our mission, at, we are a development capital fund and we manage the, the savings of uh, people from Quebec mainly. Uh, and this money that they put to our, into our fund is for their retirement purposes mainly. Uh, in that regard, part of, the, of our mission is to help uh, people in Quebec to achieve a part of their financial goals. That was one part of the mission. But to, to, to achieve that, that goal, we, we put that money to work. So, so our main objective is to take the money invested by those shareholders and we invest it in, in businesses in all spheres of activities in Quebec, not only mining, but every 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 spheres of activity. So that allows us to, to achieve another part of our mission, which is to contribute to Quebec's economic growth by creating and maintaining maintaining good jobs through our investments in businesses. Uh, uh, the fall as at uh, number uh, November 30, uh, 2020, uh, the last time we uh, reported our uh, numbers, we had uh, assets uh, that stands at $15.6 billion. Uh, we have over 700,000 shareholders, uh, and they all live in Quebec, like I said. And we are partner with more than 3,000 companies that we have direct investment in, not public companies, but uh, really a private companies based mainly in Quebec. Uh, we have uh, more than 700 people working for us in our head office in Montreal. Uh, and we are present in all Quebec's region through uh, the regional funds who also invest in the Quebec economy. So for the mining sector, more specifically, uh, we, we are present in all, in all, uh, at all stage of, uh, of, the, of the sector. We do exploration company, development company, and also producers. We also do stream, stream companies. Uh, we also invest in private companies involved in the mining sector. Let's say drilling companies, manufacturers of drilling parts, services companies, uh, uh, and th th those type of entities. Uh, all our events, uh, our, all the companies where we are involved are public. They, we don't put the numbers, but we put their names. So all those names are available on our websites. Uh, we have been present in this sector for more than 30 years right now. And we were there independent of all the cycles. We were there when it was bad and also when it's good. We invest every year in, in, in the sector. 
mainly in exploration companies. When time are when, when the times are tough, Frank, we, we want to, to be supportive because one of our role, like I said, is to support the Quebec the, the industry. So uh, what we do is we do mainly equity financing in the sector and we also do loan, but we don't do secured financing. We are a non-secured borrower. So uh, the team, uh, there's me, as you, as you, as you know, uh, Danny Bensi, who probably a few per person on the, on the call, on the, on the line, sorry, uh, probably know he has been involved in the sector for more than 25 years. He worked at the CAS too, so uh, he is a well-known figure in the mining sector. Uh, and we have, we are, when I do investment, I have, I am helped by a, a multi-specialist team uh, to 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 do my investment. Uh, we do our legal, our taxation uh, studies internally, and and now uh, in the recent year we had the new department, which is the ESG one, and we'll talk about this probably later. So. Uh, and about my portfolio, I, have, I am invested the following in about 40 public companies and we have a, a lot of private companies involved in the sector. So I think that that's, that's about it for, for us. And now uh, for the other part of the, or the first question that you asked, Frank, uh, well, let, let's start by saying that there's a big mining tradition in Quebec. We have all those great institutions and the case is, is really one of them, but, but at first, you have to have minds, buddy. You have to have, you have, to, have to have minds. And, and I, I come from Rouen, Norando, and as you may know, uh, the Norando mine was built here. Well, was well, not built here, but the mine was located here, and it gave birth to to Narando Inc., which should become a, a, one of the largest companies in the world at the time. So there's a big mining tradition, especially in in, in the, the the regions of Quebec, the city of Bicibi region, and and so also the north and the Côte Nord. Which has, which has iron mines there. But uh, at first, you need to have mines. And I think that Quebec offers a lot of opportunities, and it's, it still does. The, 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 the territoire or the, the, the Quebec, uh, Quebec has a lot of grounds not, not yet uh, well explored. You know, when you look at maps, you see that uh, a lot of historical work have been done on the ABCB region, a little, a little bit in, in the north of Quebec. but most of the Quebec right now is not is not very uh, there, there is not a there is there have been not a lot of exploration experiences. So, I think that first the mining tradition maybe explains the the attraction of uh, people from the industry. And then, of course, when you have a big industry that is contributing to the economy, you will have in, in, in institutions like the CAIS, like the Fonds, like the government that will want to 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 be supportive of those industry and try to. To, to invest in it and make sure that it continues to grow and, and it has an, uh, an, environment, an environment well when, where, where we can develop our, our, our suppliers, our manufacturers, but also have good, good uh, jobs that, uh, that benefits for, to, to, to get it. And, and you, you have to have people that likes the sector to, to contribute in it. And let's say CDEX, CDEX Paul is, uh, as you know, is. Uh, was created by by the fund and by the government in 2001 and, and the idea was that at the time the price of gold was down uh, it was tough in quebec and there there was a lack of exploration expenditure at the time and and cdex was created it with the goal to attract investment in quebec to support exploration to support new ideas to diversify the, the territories to do for new commodities. And in that regard, I think that the, 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 the goal then was uh, clearly achieved. As you know, Frank, you haven't told it, but you, you are on the board of CEDEX also, and you have seen what CEDEX has done so far. So, so it's, a, it's a great, great entity and it has been very supportive. So, but, but it started with the interest and the motivation of people like Gaetan Morin at the time to, to, to do something meaningful for, for the province of Quebec. So, I think that in the end, we all have a desire and we all like the sector. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that uh, if you ask us uh, if why we work in the mining sector, we will have different stories, but I think we all like it. It's uh, like I told you, I come from the mine, uh, a mining region. I'm based in the Rowena Randa and my father worked in the mining sector and I, I, I grew around the mine. So it, it, it's in my, my, let's say my vein. So I think that does it. There's a lot of people like that in Quebec. Uh, the government, uh, Amio told it, 
told, told it, but they have been very supportive also to put in place really good tax incentives through the times. Uh, let's say the flow through system, uh, the, the REA, REA, REA in the late, nine, late 80s, which was another vehicle that supported the industry. So, so uh, all those tax incentives created an environment where investors could come here and put money at very, very low, lower, lower cost sometimes than other jurisdictions. So that maybe explains a little bit of our success. And uh, I'll, I'll stop there. We have, I know that you have other questions. Lots to so. talk about. Lots to talk about. Well, yeah, thanks, sorry. Steph. I mean, so, so far we've seen, you know, Paul gave his assessment, talked about La Caisse. Uh, you know, he'll, he'll have an opportunity also to talk about his, the fund that he manages. Uh, you know, Amu, you, you talked about Investissement Québec, which is a government investment arm. Uh, the case was created in the 60s, I think, which uh, played a, a big role. Interesting, Serge, I mean, the largest union in, in the province, which creates a fund to invest in various businesses and then actually actively supports mining, either on the, you know, on the startup side, on the uh, the exploration, which is a very risky uh, part of, explore, of, of investment. Uh, Amio, again, can understate your, your intervention regarding SOCAM, the, the, the exploration arm of, of the government, which has, uh, tr which had tremendous success. So I'll turn it over now to, to Angelina, because, uh, uh, you know, I, I asked Angelina to intervene from, from the investment banker's perspective, right? And because obviously, you, you know, you're coming in, you're an investment banker, and then you see all these institutions that have you know, funds allocated to support mining. You, you also, it's part of your business. You want to, you want to support mining. You want to play a role. So, so, so Angelina, why don't you talk to us about, well, present, you know, talk about La, La, La Banque Laurentienne, Laurentian Bank, what it's done, but maybe also from your, from your perspective, from an investment banking side, how did this ecosystem, how do you view this ecosystem and what did, what did it represent for you and, 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 and your business? Well, th thank you, first of all, for having me here. Um, it's great to be on this panel, um, and hopefully I can add to some of the uh, the conversations we're having here about in Quebec. Yes, I am an investment banker currently. I do have a history of um, working in the industry uh, over 20 years as well, so I have worked directly for mining companies um, in private equity and, um, and uh, on boards in Quebec as well. So uh, hopefully I can contribute from several levels here, but a few, a few words about Laurentian Bank. Um, it is a fully integrated uh, financial services provider. Uh, it was founded in in, uh, in Montreal, in Quebec, so a Quebec bank through and through. I wrote down the years so I wouldn't forget, 1846 uh, founded here and is currently the seventh largest uh, Canadian chartered bank. Um, two years ago, myself and my partner Joe Gallucci decided to launch an investment banking team specifically for mining with Laurentian. And I'll get into some of the reasons uh, of that shortly, but just so you know, we add some color to what LBS does. It is a full service broker dealer. Our team has um, corporate finance experience, so we can uh, provide uh, advisory for M&A, uh, financing, et cetera. And I'll give you a couple of numbers later on in terms of what, what we've been able to achieve in the last couple of years. Um, but what we what we saw was an opportunity in Quebec. Um, essentially, we we had uh, we wanted to leverage the balance sheet of a Schedule One bank in order to do bot deals, for example. Here, uh, because we are a small team within a bank, we can be entrepreneurial. We have some flexibility, and we can be responsive to a certain extent. And I have some numbers later that I want to share with you with respect to the the market that or the context in Quebec, which um, helped us uh, determine that we wanted to set up this team. But uh, we also wanted to complement the the mining analysts that we had in Toronto when we when we set up um, our team and to be very focused about the coverage um, in terms of where we could be impactful and that happened to be on a certain size company based at, based in this province. Um, as of today, we are the only mining investment banking team based in Montreal and focused on Quebec. Certainly some of the bigger banks have employees here, but not not a fully dedicated team. We also wanted to position ourselves um, as we looked around the, the ecosystem and investment banking um, in Quebec. We wanted to position ourselves as a bridge for Quebec companies to use our networks, Joe's and mine, that we had um, gathered over the years um, outside the province and internationally uh, for Quebec mining companies for marketing, for financing and M&A opportunities. And conversely, we wanted to position ourselves uh, to be able to bring in management teams and expertise and capital from outside of Quebec um, to take advantage of this particular jurisdiction. And we can talk about some examples later, particularly um, hot right now or Australian interest um, in, in, in Quebec. 
Um, also, a core focus of our team has been to increase the dialogue and the transparency between um, issuers and the Quebec funds. Um, so when we started, and I'm sure all of you will remember, or Paul, it was before your time at CEDAX, um, but Serge will, uh, Stefan will remember at, um, at CASE, when we launched our team, we sat down with each one of you and we said, what are your top 10 um, priorities in terms of issuers, in terms of your alignment and your goals, because as a bank, we can help um, amplify that or execute that in different ways than you can as funds. So it was our absolute mission to interact positively with you guys and to um, help uh, articulate or, or or action some of the um, some of the uh, deals that that we want that that you guys are also involved in. Um, so I think that I'll, I'll leave it there. I did want to say quickly um, in terms of numbers. Uh, since we started, we've actually completed um, 81 financings, most of them in Quebec. Uh, as Serge mentioned flow through, very big topic, I think, frankly, um, out of the out of the 81 deals, 47 of them for us have been flow through. Throw some numbers out there to almost 200 million uh, in flow through just through Laurentian Bank. So imagine what uh, what everybody else is doing across Canada, but more more specifically Quebec. Uh, from a hard dollar perspective, we've uh, done for uh, we've been participating or leading 34 deals. Uh, totaling just over 900 million. Uh, so for a little team that set up just just two years ago, literally April 1st is our anniversary for two years, we've actually managed to to do an, uh, a, a lot of business here. Um, and one of our objectives also, which I know that we've heard a lot through our conversations with the funds, is maybe to help encourage consolidation as well. Uh, we talked about the different regions in Quebec. We also talked about the number of players that are here. So if that's, um, if that's uh, a mandate or, or an objective uh, for the funds, in terms of investing into bigger entities, I think that would be um, fantastic and a way for us to also help uh, concretely. And finally, maybe I'll mention, you know, as a bank, um, you know, we can help with the objective of getting to the next Quebec producer. Uh, you know, we have we have a couple of uh, stars uh, in Quebec. We talked about gold and iron ore. Um, champion is a, is a champion in Quebec. However, not all of our um, our, uh, our gold producers are actually based here. Uh, and we, we lost uh, Semifo in the last uh, six months or so to an international uh, takeover. So while um, the, the history or the origins are in Quebec, you know, who's the next producer based in Quebec? And so absolutely, that would be a goal of Laurentian Bank to, to make that happen. But uh, maybe if I switch to trying to answer your specific question, you know, how, you know, how does this happen and how does it come to be, uh, you know, just to just to add to what the, the guys have already talked about in terms of the origin of the ecosystem. Um, I think it is a bit of a self-fulfilling um, situation where the obviously the rocks were good. Um, the mines were built. It drew the investment. And then you can't forget the um, the infrastructure. Um, the infrastructure as a consequence of these mines, right? The roads that we have, the power, the hydropower that we have, the access to water, um, the labor force that we have, uh, all of it is self-fulfilling. You, you know, it, it is a big loop. We have we have the expertise here. Um, you know, I don't, sixth on the Fraser's list. I, I always think we should be higher. Um, and I have no idea, um, you know, how we're going to get up that list in terms of uh, external perception, but hopefully panels like this where we can specifically talk about the um, the government support, the policies that are in place and the infrastructure that we have, um, you know, next year will be, will be higher on that list. So maybe I'll leave it there, Frank. Well, that's interesting. Obviously, you said we, we have the, it's almost like a build it and they will come uh, scenario, right? Like, uh, so it's, yeah, well, thanks, uh, thanks, Angelina. Um, you know, very insightful. But let, let, let's just explore that a bit more before we move on to the other question. Because I mean, we all talked about government initiatives, government measures. So, you know, for our international audience listening to us, I guess who you know, one of the objective is, you know, if you want to do something like this in your jurisdiction, I guess, I guess, you know, uh, one of the key ingredients is having government support and government action to to be able to to allow such an ecosystem to be. To, to be built and 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 maybe Paul I mean I, I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind uh, I mean you've been the CEO of a mining uh, of a gold producer uh, you, you you know you've seen you know how, how how important is that government support you know for 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 our industry and 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 and, and building this and and creating this ecosystem probably well, an obvious I, answer but I mean yeah. yeah yeah no it is an obvious answer. I mean it, it's very important I mean it, building a mine is, is is becoming increasingly challenging no matter where you are in the world right and sort of the, the whole supply is being sort of pinched off because it's not we've got the sort of the not in my backyard scenario um, 
So if you don't have government support um, in all in all forms, uh, it becomes very very difficult to establish an industry. You know, and uh, we're we're lucky to have it in Quebec. And I don't, I mean, I, I would say it's as strong now as it's ever been. The, the government that's in power now is very eager to uh, to uh, to keep the oxygen coming to the mining industry. And uh, and I would say uh, it, the future looks bright for us. We have to just keep, you know, because the low hanging fruit is is gone. We have to keep keep our, our, our shoulder to the wheel and, and 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 keep exploring and keep producing, keep developing talent, all the things that are necessary, uh, you know, for a thriving mining industry. I think we're doing, but we have to not let our guard down. Yeah, it's interesting. Anybody else want to intervene? Uh, no specific order in terms of the importance of the government uh, government support. Uh, Amu. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean uh, had a, well, I think when I started in this industry, I think that the, uh, the the cost of capital to build a mine were much lower than today. Today, uh, under uh, five hundred to one billion dollars, uh, it's difficult to 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 start a mine. And you know the financial markets are cyclical, as you, as we all know. Uh, so having support from the government or institutions like uh, the Fonds de Solidarité, like CIDEX, I think it's uh, utmost important. Uh, when we talk to uh, promoters of uh, projects here in Quebec, they, they feel uh, lucky. Uh, some are based uh, abroad, outside of Quebec or uh, in other uh, countries. And they, they definitely like the, having the government support their, their projects. And for most cases, it helps them, I would say. Today, uh, I guess financing a gold project is probably easier than a year ago or two years ago. But in, in industrial uh, minerals, uh, you know, it's much more uh, different story. Uh, yes, there's, there are some cycles, but the, just the nature of the minerals, it's by, by, by themselves, it's, uh, it's difficult. For having the government support uh, is, uh, I think, uh, most uh, important for, for these projects. And, and for us, just to, uh, uh, I guess, for us, IQ at IQ, we, we, we can support any project from in any mineral, let's say, uh, about, uh, uh, if we take uh, uranium apart, which doesn't have uh, much uh, social uh, acceptance here, but uh, any projects uh, in mining in Quebec, uh, as long as the deposit is in Quebec, Investissement uh, Quebec is here to, uh, to uh, support the, the project as long as it uh, makes sense on a business sense, business wide. Interesting one. Angelina, I mean, you, you did mention flow through, right? And flow through is a, gov is a government measure. Uh, you know, the Quebec, Quebec has taken it to the extra level to what we call super flow through. This was, has been existing for many, many years now. So I presume, probably goes without saying, but I presume having a measure like that, you did mention the flow through that you've raised, uh, you've helped raise for, for your clients. I presume it makes it that much easier to do these financings if you're if you're acting if you're doing it for a Quebec company with all these these incentives rather than doing it for somewhere else in another jurisdiction in Canada. Com completely, um, Frank. I mean, the ability to have even several different types of um, uh, vehicles within one financing makes it attractive, right? Because you, you have the funds with the hard dollars, but then you could have the charity flow through as well. Uh, I know that's a Canadian thing, not specific to Quebec, but that's been what's really um, attracting a lot of uh, foreign funds, especially Australians who have really latched onto this and understanding that they could get, you know, 1.8 um, uh, of, a, you know, of an investment into the ground, very attractive. Um, we on our team have a dedicated uh, person, Tom Nicolatopoulos, uh, on our team who only does flow through. So this guy is an expert. He knows the flow through funds. In fact, Laurentian Bank helps finance the flow through funds, uh, which then turn around and invest um, into uh, into the into these um, into these companies. So uh, I think it's a really again, it's another little mini ecosystem within the greater mm -hmm. ecosystem, the whole flow through market. But absolutely one of our strengths. Thanks, Angelina. Frank, if I, if, yeah. if I can have something on that, because we talk about you talk about flow through shares, and it's a very important part of uh, the WIF company in the exploration sector finance their, their, their work. But that's where funds like us, uh, CDEX, the Caisse de Depot, and other institutions in Quebec have a part to play because we, we only do our dollars. I thought 
you mentioned it, but uh, we really have to focus on the fact that our fund invests in our dollars and they are sometimes the harder dollar to find because the investors, we don't get any tax return, tax incentive for, for doing the investment. So, and we pay, not we pay, but those financing in our dollar pays for the salaries, the, 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 the general and administrative expense. And it's, it's not money going on the ground. So companies and exploration and development stage needs to have our dollar. And, and that's where we can do leverage because if all the institution will like a company or a project and we invest in it, we will provide only hard dollars. And that can be leveraged into flow through financing that the company can, 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 can do and raise on the markets and then go that, that money has to go on the ground. So, so I think that that's, that's a way, not, not a way, but that's how we can, uh, well, we leverage the flow through financing through, through our investments, I think. That's, that's a very good point, I think, in, in having a, a sound ecosystem with aggressive tax incentives for private investment, and then the funds can come in and fill a gap, which is on the hard dollars for the, for the, for the, for the regular uh, budget uh, and regular expenses. So why don't we move on uh, to our next question? Um, and Amio, uh, this one's directed to you a bit, although although I think everyone, uh, I would like to know what everyone thinks. Uh, you know, there's no there's no organized cooperation between the funds. You don't you don't you don't have that. You don't. But it's 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 really funny how you know over the years in this ecosystem, you know, even though you all, all have your own missions and investment objectives, uh, there's kind of a natural cooperation that, that comes on where you will intervene each of you as at these at these uh, at these different levels and different stages uh, of, of the project so obviously uh, you know how do you suppose that ecosystem allows for, for 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 the funds to work and to to cooperate with one another in supporting uh, uh, the projects in Quebec MU uh, well, yes, I think you've heard, uh, I guess, uh, the presentations of the different funds and, and uh, we all have our different mandates, as you mentioned, and different field of intervention. But uh, at the end of the day, I think we, we have uh, uh, objectives that are, are common. I think we all want to develop the, the CD industry, uh, the mining industry being developed in Quebec. Uh, we all want to keep uh, more expertise in Quebec. Uh, we want uh, new mines to be in operations over the long term, and we all want to realize a return on our investment. So uh, I, I think for, for us, and we've known each other for many years, all of us, so it's, uh, we know, uh, all, you know most of the projects were, you know, for, for us, we invest at the PEA level and, uh, and uh, later stage. But CDEX and the fund and even the CAS support the exploration projects. Uh, but with all these uh, different mandates, and uh, we we're, we're uh, kind of uh, uh, we are, we cooperate together, and we're kind of uh, complementary. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, to develop uh, build mines, it costs a lot. Of, first, to find mines is a lot of money that's, uh, that has to be invested in the exploration. Uh, through SOCAM, we do our own part, but uh, there's some projects that SOCAM is involved uh, with companies that are financed by the phone and Serge and Serge and uh, CDEX and Paul and, and Angelina as well. So, uh, and, and these projects, when they grow, then IQ can come and uh, complete the uh, financial uh, package that. Uh, other institutions uh, cannot. So uh, I, I guess uh, at this point, we it's natural to collaborate, to cooperate, and, and support these projects. Anybody want to take a crack at that one, uh, Serge? Go ahead. Yeah, well, you know, uh, have you uh, have put it very clear and well? Think, but you know, when you look at exploration companies. Uh, well, we cooperate. We do sometimes uh, find the, the same financing. We support a lot of companies in CDX at the form of the CDQ, which are the same companies, but we don't do it necessarily for the same reason always. Uh, but but I think I'm used to, to we, we are sometimes complementary, but it's important also to, to keep our own 
our own, uh, let's say, thesis of investment. We all like, we don't like all the same commodities at the same levels. We don't like the same prom the, the promoters at, 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 at the same levels. Some, some CDX will like, CDPQ maybe not, or, 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 or the contrary. But so, so I think we have to, to keep uh, our own mandate uh, separate, but we gain to, to share our expertise, to, to exchange on ideas, on how to promote the industry, what are our takes? I, I like to. It's 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 fun. It's it's important for me to know what Amio thinks about certain commodities and what Stefan uh, the case thinks about some and and Paul. Well, but doesn't mean that if we sh because we share that we'll at the end have the same idea. But at least I'll know where everybody stands and I, I have a good idea if if a company goes into financing with certain project, well, I think, but probably Sidex will like it and probably Stefan will like it or, uh, but, but so, so at, and, and at exploration stages, the, 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 the needs, the financial needs are so high and constant that we're not in competition. So uh, I don't see uh, Stefan, Sidex or anybody else in competition at the exploration stage because we all know the process. It takes time. It takes a lot of money and a lot of uh, of, uh, of knowledge to 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 find a mine to build it. And so, so there will be uh, uh, well uh, space for every every investor at every every stages of the process of the financing process. And of course, when you go into development and production, well. We have mandate of uh, supporting the Quebec economy, but we don't do the same products. I don't do secured financing. Amio can do it. Uh, Stefan and the guys can. So, so we won't be in competition, but we won't bid or, or try to, to do same, the same products sometimes. So we work together, but we are also competitors sometimes, but it's always done in, in, in good faith and with respect to each, each other organization, I think. Mm -hmm. Amu, Amu used a word that I like very much. It's an easy word, but it's, he said complementary. So, I mean, all these, all these different actors are in there and they're, 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 they, they, they're complementary to one another because of their, their mission. There's no coercion or there's no, you know, uh, it's just complementary, right? I presume, Angelina, from your perspective as an investment banker, when you look at all these funds and the fact that they're complementary, but all obviously have different mission objectives. You talked about speaking to every one of them, I, I presume you yeah. factor that in when you when you have yeah. a financing going and you're going to need to approach these various funds, right? No, exactly. And that's one of the one of the areas where I think we've been we've been helpful. And, and please, guys, let me know if it hasn't been. But certainly um, the multitude of Quebec companies have that have been around for a long time already have existing relationships with the funds. So to, you know, insert ourselves in to try to add value. How does that work? And really, the point is, is that we can have conversations with you directly that they that they can't or that they don't or in conjunction with other financings or other companies that we're talking to. So for us, it's not a matter of I'll call Paul only when there's a financing. It's, hey, Paul, what's what's the update? Let's talk every couple of weeks. Same thing, Amio and, and, and Serge and with Stéphane and with Estée Bay James. We didn't talk about the Société Développement Bay James, but they're also a group that we um, talk regularly with in terms of who are we seeing what are we seeing what are the stories that we're on or that we're actually covering on our coverage list or that we've now just newly put on our watch list so these are constant conversations as opposed to i'm just going to hit you up for financing when it's when it's needed and i think that that enhances the dialogue right across the board please agree with me guys <laughs> we agree with you angie <laughs> So Paul, let's move let's move it over to you now. Uh, you know, I think uh, obviously there, there there's a question. You know, when when considering how how such an ecosystem came to be, you know, and mm -hmm. one of the things we talked about is well, there has to be mines, right? There has to be mines in mm -hmm. Quebec, but mm -hmm. to have mines in Quebec, there there obviously has to be exploration. So maybe you know, here's a, maybe it's a good time for you to introduce CDEX uh, yeah. and what it does, but and then you know, and the, and to and then to address the following question, and in your opinion. You know, to have to add, to have an ecosystem like that, how how fundamental and important is it to have, you know, investment uh, initiatives that support exploration? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, well, yeah, I, it's, it's it's obviously very key because if you don't have the discoveries, it you know it's eventually it's going to run dry, right? But let me start. Let me take a step back and introduce CDEX. It's it's uh, as the guys were saying, it's it's uh, this very cool initiative that was put forth about twenty years ago uh, by uh, by uh, Serge's colleagues at the Fonds de Solidarité and the Quebec government. And they realized back then that. You know, in order to have a healthy mining industry, we have to take care of the very front end. I mean, we have to make sure that the drills are turning and that, uh, you know, there's exploration being done. And and basically, uh, if that's not taken care of, well, you you know, you're going to run out of mines to develop. <clears throat> and sometimes to fund exploration companies, it's not always that easy because it's a high risk end of the spectrum. And um, if you run into bear markets, they're hard to finance. And, uh, and what uh, one of the, the purposes CDEX was formed was to introduce an institutional player in the exploration game, because really mostly it, it's a retail game exploration, right? And it's hard to raise any kind of serious money for exploration companies uh, on a retail basis. So what, 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 what basically CDEX was, was in the, the introduction of, of an institutional exploration player, which was kind of novel back then kind of still is really because often most um you know um investment funds um get a little afraid of that's the end of the spectrum right they like to look at things when when, when a resource starts to develop because it's de-risked well with cdex that's pretty much too late for us you know we're, we're at the very front end of things you know and so we're not afraid to 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 listen to you know, uh, you know, uh, geophysical programs and, and and till anomalies surveys, and this is the kind of stuff where we we that we like, and and, and but it's not the kind of things that are necessarily easily financed for the company. So we had to provide that oxygen for those companies. So to say that you know, twenty years later, we 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 not only did that, but we we provided a return, a pretty significant return, really. I mean, we almost tripled our assets, you know, to our to our limited partners, the FO and the government. Um, but we also, you know, we also fulfill the other the other mandate, the dual part of our mandate is that we, we did provide um, significant funding for these exploration companies, which, again, I mean, you name me another place in the planet that has a, a you know, a vehicle like that. Uh, I don't think there's one I might be mistaken. But so, you know, CDEX in the last 20 years is funded about 150 exploration companies you know they've deployed about 100 million dollars in, in in you know high risk plays and so and we continue to do it and and we're a very sympathetic door to knock on um for 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 exploration companies you know obviously if you're in a roaring bull market and it's easy to raise capital but boy sometimes it gets a little tough out there and companies, uh, but we, you know, good years and bad. We're we we've got our budget, and like this year, we'll probably we'll probably invest in twenty five companies, you know, um, and that's a pretty that's a pretty good good run rate to use going forward. Um, so it's a it's a it's a unique little vehicle, uh, and as Mu says, it's very complementary uh, to to the other pillars of our you know Quebec society in our in our, in our mining uh, ecosystem um so yeah it's again uh you know when you when you add when you add all the elements up what what Amio does what stefan does at the case what Serge does at the phone and what some of the smaller players have done what, what we do it's i don't think there's another place on the planet that has what we have for the mining industry and um so i agree with angie we should be like number one on the fraser institute we used to be we used to be, I think, or two. 2007. Or 2007 you know, and, number one. We're, we're, yeah, so we'll, head, we'll, we'll get back to the top spot. But it's not about a beauty contest, really. It's just about doing all the right things. And yeah. uh, Let's know, not forget we made it down to the 21st spot. Oh, did we? Yeah. And now we've, we've made our way back to we, six. We clawed our so way we're, back. Exactly. We're getting back. We're getting back. Exactly. Um, so really, that's CDEX in a nutshell. Um, and uh, but uh, you know I like the I like the comment that uh, Mu uh, brought up as well. Like I've known Mu for 25 years. I've known Serge a long time. Uh, Stefan, we all know each other. We all respect each other, and we all talk a lot. And we all share our views. 
and it's it's just a very cool little fraternity we have here in Quebec, and uh, and we have we have significant funds behind it as well. You know, yeah, well, we so won't show them our secret handshake though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't, yeah, show, that's we won't right. show them that. That's right. <laughs> but may if I can bring you to that, that maybe we, we we're talking about the the importance to support exploration, and obviously you talked a bit about it. One of the mission too is diversification, right? We talked about twenty one active mines in Quebec, eight of which are gold mines. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we got the nickel, we got that. So, you know, the, the talk about diversification too, from your perspective and the importance mm -hmm. for, for the future, for the future mines that yeah. were. Yeah. Well, d d diversification in two areas, right? Commodity. You're right. I mean, we're, we're gold heavy here. We want, we want to see more nickel and copper plays and eventually more, you know, specialty metals and strategic metals. And we, we've got a whole, you know, the whole spectrum of commodities in Quebec, you know? Uh, um, so yeah, diversification from a commodity aspect is important, but also diversification from, you know, a geological context, you know, is in very important. So what we're, what we're doing more and more with CDEX is we're favoring, you know, the, 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 actually we always have done this, but I would say it's more, more prevalent now than it's ever been. And we're, we're trying to get beyond the beaten tracks of the Archean setting, you know, green, greenstone belts in the Archean setting, but we're, we're investing now in, in Grenville situations and, other sub provinces in Quebec <clears throat> to try to get away from the, you know, the, the, the path of least resistance. Let's go to, to the easy, to the easy, uh, easy geological context. Let's try to diversify away from that. So, um, so I, I would say it, it's a very important theme that's, that, that, that we're, that we're playing with right now. I think, I mean, Frank, you're our chairman at CDEX, but I think the last, uh, I think the last four of our five investments have been done in, 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 in geological contexts that are kind of in, in, in a diversification standpoint. So let's try to, you know, let's try to expand our horizons. Let's try to use innovative, you know, exploration techniques to, to understand the different rocks and the different settings. And mm -hmm. um, so it, it's a, it's a, it's, I would say it's probably the biggest theme that we're, we're dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. And I think it will continue. Thanks, Paul. Serge, I mean, let, let, let's talk about the, the fund, right? Because the fund is, is a fund that supports exploration. You know, uh, uh, as Paul mentioned, it's a risky investment, but you also have your, your, your objectives as well, right? As a fund, you're not there to lose money necessarily, but maybe your take on, 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 on you've talked about it a bit during the, since the beginning about the, the importance of, of exploration and, and how, the support. Well, it is important to support exploration. With no exploration, there's no future mines. So, so every two, four, two, two, three, four years, somebody at the, the phone asks us, why you still do small tickets compared to, to our overall uh, but, uh, annual budget? We invest between 800 to million to 1 billion in the Quebec economy. So what, as you know, in the exploration uh, finance, when we do exploration financing, we do small rounds. We, we put two, three, four hundred thousand dollars. So it doesn't move a lot on, on, on the big picture of our fund. But, but we always say that it is important for us to, to support those ecos this ecosystem because we have to have a, a, a wide range of explorers in Quebec that have access to money, that brings new ID, that, that uh, as Paul said, uh, will we'll go to to try to explore new new sector, new area. Well, the Granville, Paul, it's interesting what you take what you say about the Granville. There's there, there's a renewed interest of, for, for this province right now. I think, and, and it's fun to have. Uh, it's fun. It's a good thing to have CDEX supported it. But we also are present there. And, and if it can open new area of exploration, I, I think we play a role. And, and then by doing that, we support the the, the benefit. The benefit is to support the private sector because drillers will work, workers in Quebec will have to, to, to do field work. Uh, I haven't, we haven't talked about geophysics so far, but uh, exploration companies are a good lab for, 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 for geophysics projects. So it's, it's, it's really, it's very important. And, and when we develop in Quebec those expertise, we can export them because we're not in competition between ourselves. I think the war, wild world is, is, is our competition and we have to be very, very sharp at the beginning of the process. And I see the exploration uh, companies very important in this process. Thanks, Serge. 
Amio or Angelina, before we move on to the other, I know, I, I know Amio, you, like you said, you, you intervene more at the PEA stage and after. So we're talking about maybe a more advanced or, or Angelina, if there's something you want to, before we move on to our next question in terms of exploration and the importance to, 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 to have support and investment initiatives for exploration. No, I think well, that was one of the reasons we positioned ourselves here in, in Quebec, Frank, and um, maybe the next question, I'll talk a little bit more about context, but uh, we talked about our producing mines, the number of, um, you know, development companies is very, very low. It's all very heavily weighted on the exploration side. So how do we give them the appropriate attention um, in, in conjunction with what the funds are already doing? And that's, that's kind of why we set up shop here. Yeah, maybe one quick comment, I guess. Uh, well, CDEX is a product of uh, the, the, the phone and, and, the, uh, and the government. So the, the, the government's playing a role in, in that sense. But as well, like I mentioned earlier, SOCAM has a $15 million budget for uh, exploration, yearly budget for exploration. So that's, that's the way the government decided to support projects. But for, for Ressource Quebec, I guess it's a later stage. We come in after. Um, and we can invest, you know, just to, to give you a highlight, we can inv invest from $1 million up to uh, several uh, hundred million dollars. Uh, just recently in, in December, uh, with a private equity uh, fund and the strategic partners, we bought the assets of uh, Namaska Lithium to develop this project. And, and in, in that transaction, the government expressed intention to invest up to $300 million. So, so I guess uh, that you know, gives you a, a, a way how we can be complementary as well. You know? mm. That's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, you mentioned you you intervene at a different level, but you do have an exploration arm with SOCAM who, who's, who actually uh, is also a joint venture partner with other exploration companies and contributes to support of exploration. That's another thing that I think is unique uh, that we have in our ecosystem. Uh, let's move on. I've started getting some questions that we'll address a bit later, but these, these ones that I just got, may, we may be able to fold them into our this next question that, that I'm directing to Serge. And maybe just a reminder for the audience, uh, if you want to send me your questions, uh, we're going to have a 50, 10 to 15 minute Q&A uh, at the end. Uh, so, you know, I, I, like we talked about, funds, uh, Serge funds and invest, you all invest in different stages. Uh, and, uh, you know, so what are the key drivers, you know, for these decisions? What are the key drivers, the, the investment criteria when you make such a decision? And, and you know, I've, I've, I've received some questions in terms of how do you, what, the re measuring of the risk factors. And obviously, Serge, you talked about at the beginning, what about ESG? Uh, the, 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 does that form part of your, your key drivers and your investment criteria? So if you could, if you could uh, give us a bit of insight on that, Serge. I'll try, I'll try to be quick, uh, Frank, but it, it's a big question. So, so of course, we have our, our process and every, every fund, I think, uh, has its own process and its own way to analyze and, and quantify the risk of investing in those companies. But uh, I, I, I will say it, it's a cliche, but people, it's the first criteria. With who are we investing? Who's, who's the president? Who's the VP Explo? What? Uh, who's on the board? So, so we of course look at track records. That's a, that's the easy question. We always have to to have faith in the people that uh, we invest money in. Uh, uh, we look at their ability and and their track record when they have one of how, how they how they manage their old project if they if they were in other companies and were they able to bring capital to raise and F equity to advance those projects. So, so that, that's one criteria. The, the other, of course, in exploration, we always look at commodities. Every year, as we do a few times a year, a review, we do it internally. Of course, we, we, we use outside uh, research, but we have our own people and we, we take, take position on, on the commodities that, that we like. And of course, the one that we are more careful with. So, so we take a position on every commodity. So, so sometimes a, a company, an exploration company, will approach us, and I say, "Sorry, but I can't, I can't do for 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 X reason, and I won't do it, go in details." But we we take a position on that. Of course, locations. Uh, we all have thesis, but a, an easy one. I, I, I'm with the phone uh, for almost eight years now, and w when I came in, I always liked the Valdor cap. That's an easy one. That's an easy call to make today. But in 2013, 14, 
I don't know if you remember, there, there was more play, there were more players. Integra had not yet founded its mine, uh, and the, the, the camp was more fragmented. So so I decided at the time to take position in all the companies. So so regardless of, of, of not, not regardless, but I, I, we have put money in almost all of them, and, and it paid off because the area was good, and we had a long term. Thesis. So, so we take position and we have idea about where we want to be, where we don't want to be. Of course, when we talk about uh, uh, exploration at the grassroots stages, we know that they won't be on the on the Cadillac, uh, right? So, so they will have to go uh, more, more north or in the Grandville. So, so, so we'll look at the thesis, uh, how, how they manage exploration, how they generate projects, and we know that if we we decide to support one. Uh, we are there not only for one round, but for for subsequent rounds. It's it's a long term process, as we say. Uh, uh, governance. I won't I won't put too much emphasis on this, but it, on the, but it's very important. More at later stage, at exploration stage, it's hard for a company to bring a, a big, wide, diversified board with uh, a lot of members. So we know it's hard to attract people. Sometimes they they only get paid through their uh, stock options. They don't have big, uh, uh, big uh, bigger uh, salary there. So, but but at development stage, it's really important to have the good boards, and and uh, maybe we should insist more on that in the future. On that point, uh, especially when a company goes from exploration to development, it's not the same people that find a mine and that builds it. So so sometimes. Uh, of course, we look at, at those uh, at those uh, team, and uh, me, sometimes we put comments and we say we don't. Not that we don't like the team, but I think you should add people. We would we will intervene there. Uh, you mentioned, and I will I will uh, I will stop that. ESG and uh, Angelina. The first time we met, you asked me a question: How was ENG important for us? I remember what I told you at the time. It was about two years ago. And my answer today would be a little bit different. It's, it was important at the time, but now it's really, really important. And institutions like us starts to have our own person that, uh, that, that work for us that are specialized in ESG matter. So if we do a, a, a substantial investment in a, in a mining company, we will go through the process of review, reviewing our, all their ESG uh, policies, what are there? Of course, the G, the governance. We already did it in the past. We would look at the circular. Really look at the, what. Well, uh, we would do a, a, an extensive review on that. But the E and the S is very, very important. And now we have questions coming from our board, and we see more and more studies that shows that companies having good ESG practices should provide longer term, better long term return to the investor. So, so. Uh, the, it, it's it's now a criteria that that was important, but now it really is. And okay. I'll let the other talk around. Uh, Thanks, Serge. Paul or Amio, um, and your key drivers on the investment criteria. Uh, well, yeah, for us, I guess uh, we we to support a project, we we need the uh, sales alluded to it. We need a good management team. I think for us, uh, we we're maybe willing to take more risk than some investors, but we still want a return on our investment. And, and uh, of course, there are some uh, they must have been they must have uh, economic benefits for for the province of Quebec. Uh, but one thing I uh, I think uh, in uh, in Quebec, I think we uh, I alluded to it uh, earlier, but I think our, our expertise is. Uh, is sought uh, uh, elsewhere in the world, but so and, and we're good uh, gold miners. But uh, for industrial uh, uh, minerals, it, it's difficult sometimes to 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 find the the expertise. Uh, I look at all the battery uh, materials. Uh, the mo it was all developed by uh, Asia, so the expertise is mostly uh, in China and in Asia. So uh, so for, for these types of investments, uh, I think we'll look for uh, strategic partners. Um, I think they're, they're important. Uh, and, uh, you know, mining projects have their own challenges. But when, when you, you uh, there's the mining part of it, but then there's the, uh, I guess, the transformation and conversion. Now you're talking about chemical plants. So miners uh, uh, are not, 
you know, don't, don't necessarily have that expertise. So, so for us, we're uh, focusing more and more uh, on strategic partners uh, being uh, alongside with us. From my perspective, Frank, uh, see that, I mean, we're dealing with small companies, so, but it's, they, they still have to tick all the boxes, you know, I mean, um, we, you know, the, the, the plans that they present to us, I mean, they're going to be presenting plans to myself and to, you know, Isabelle Cadieu, my colleague, and André Laferrière, they both have 25 years plus experience in geology, so they know what, you know, they know what they're talking about, so the geological plans have to be well thought out based on sound concepts, <laughs> and, um, Qualified management and board has to be in place, really. Um, capital structure has to be sound. And, uh, you know, from and each company we invest in have to, has to have a stated uh, CSR policy. If they don't, they have to commit to have one in place, you know, in six months, you know. And so even though they're very small companies, uh, um, they do have to uh, meet those criteria. Thanks. Maybe, Thanks. maybe I'll chime yeah. in at the end here, Frank, just because yeah. I think we could do an hour and a half on ESG alone, right? Um, yeah. I think that uh, from from our perspective, um, the, the the question of impact funding has come up a lot in mining. Uh, you know, how can we can't find access to green funds for mining companies? Um, I think we're you know, there's a few disconnects there. One in terms of the size of the investment, some of the bigger funds that have green funds are looking for, you know, 100 million or 200 million dollar investments and the mining companies that we're talking about here are looking for, you know, sometimes a few hundred thousand or a few million. So there's a mismatch. And, and then, you know, also sometimes the um, the the tools are, are debt related or convertible or bonds and that's not what the mining companies want. But um, all that being said is certainly we are having conversations with all of our um, issuers, not just in Quebec on ESG. There's a, an evolution in how um, ESG uh, is reported. And I think that's an important conversation to, to have and and everything from your your board um, diversity to uh, you know the policies that you that you talk about with respect to your carbon footprint um, are coming up in conversations. But I'll stop there because we can uh, yeah. go on forever. Yeah, and that's uh, yeah, I completely agree. We could talk about that for a very long time. Uh, just about you know about ten minutes or so to go before we take some questions. Um, um, well, Angelina, uh, I mean, obviously with uh, with uh, with Laurentian Bank, uh, you've done. You financed uh, companies that are in other jurisdictions, either in Canada or elsewhere in the world. Uh, so from your perspective, I mean, how do we compare to other jurisdictions in Canada, for example, regarding the support of mining? And if we do it better, why? So um, I kind of when I was thinking about this question, I broke it down into a couple of pieces. Um, and one again was why why are we here? You know why did we pick Quebec? Um, and just looking at the numbers again, uh, we, we did a quick survey, and there's uh, just about 174 public listed companies that have mineral assets in Quebec, at least on the exchanges that we looked at. And of these, um, 41 of them have a market cap above 100 million. So only 41. So what does that mean? Um, the rest of them are below Bay Street's typical market cap, right? Um, and so 76% of the companies in Quebec are below that. And, and who are they looking to for support? Um, this is what makes Quebec different, right? They have they have access to support. And so LBS setting up in Quebec can now use um, you, or, or amplify what the funds are already doing by, by looking at these companies. Um, I thought that was an important uh, an important way to set the stage in terms of context here. Um, so that's what that's how we're different. We can support these lower market cap companies in a way that's different than other provinces. Um, secondly, uh, Amio mentioned this a few times. Uh, Quebec came up with a came out with a plan at the end of October last year, specifically on critical and strategic minerals. I don't know any other province that has done that. Uh, very specific focus on, say, we want to be a leader, uh, not just at the mineral um, exploration mining stage, but right through the whole process. Uh, so while we are very good at iron ore and, and gold and to some extent um, diamonds, uh, how do we how do we develop a plan um, to, to get there for the rest of it? And so as as bankers, what we've seen, at least in Quebec, there's a plan. Um, there's funds set aside. I, you know, it's not as concrete or deep yet in terms of how I can actually fund a graphite company or a lithium uh, or new uh, emerging lithium company. But the conversations have started. So that that's what makes Quebec difference. Um, we talked about flow through already. Absolutely. The um, the delta on the flow through 
makes Quebec different. Um, and and the fact that that uh, the funds are around and supporting uh, makes makes Quebec different. We talked about SoChem quite a bit. Uh, I think um, there's been a change in management at SoChem too. And and the and the uh, you know the story you gave about Camior, I think that's sort of coming full circle again. Uh, when we get calls from uh, foreign investors or foreign management teams saying we'd love to take a take a, take a toehold in your province, well, where, where can we go shopping? Well, I've got a shopping list right here at SoChem, right? So this that's what makes um, that's what makes Quebec different. So that's my short list. <laughs> well, that's that's very interesting. I don't know, I don't know if anybody wants to intervene on that before we move on to our uh, to our well, next topic. Serge, yes. Well, could be, we haven't. Spoke, spoke about it, but in Quebec, there's a big database that is public and available to all companies that was uh, created by the people at the government. It was the Ministère des Ressources uh, Natural Resources uh, Department, I think, that, that built the, the big database. So a companies from Australia, Africa, can come in Quebec, access to the data that is available, uh, and and they, they can try to generate ideas from there uh, and it's available to everybody at, at, at no cost. So that's a big tool. I haven't seen that uh, in any any other region, I think. Uh, and I won't, uh, I won't add to what Angelina said because I think that she provided a lot of, uh, she's already said a, a lot of the, the things that are specified and are good in Quebec, but the, this big data, data, data available to everybody, I think is something very, very interesting in Quebec. Yeah, that's a that's a very good very good point from Geologie Quebec and uh, the fact that uh, and I know that's uh, you know for 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 being involved in in, in various jurisdictions across the world and having in, in the course of my work meeting with you know other governments who are trying to to develop their mining uh, their mining platform obviously having this kind of database and making it publicly available uh, is 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 a key importance if you want to attract investment, and it's one of the criteria in the in the Fraser Institute survey, right? It's one of the it's one of the criteria that they look at is uh, access to the the database. Um, well, listen, things are moving uh, quickly. Uh, we're done in about uh, just about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so let's 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 look together at, at a situation. So let's pretend. <laughs> Let's pretend that uh, there was no pandemic and we're actually in Toronto right now assisting, physically assisting PDAC conference, okay? So let's just explore that option for one. And you're in uh, one of the numerous uh, events and you, you have somebody in front of you that's from another jurisdiction. And you talk to them about what you do and uh, you know, in Quebec and what we've created. And that person it says, you know what? I find that very interesting. That's a, I'd love to be able to do something like that in my jurisdiction. Uh, if you had somebody in, in front of you who actually asked you that, what would, what would be your top three recommendations for, for, for any jurisdiction that wants to have this kind of ecosystem? What would be your top three? So maybe, a, I don't know, I'm you, I'll, I'll, I'll start with you. Yeah, let, let's pretend we're at the Faskin uh, cocktail <laughs> event. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. Next, next year, next year. <laughs> No, I guess uh, it's really it will be it would be very important for the jurisdiction to establish uh, what do they want to do with uh, what are the objectives what do do they want to develop uh, are there specific minerals that they want to develop in in, uh, in their jurisdiction uh, so establishing the the uh, the objectives is very important. Uh, but one thing, if there's a dedicated envelope, envelope uh, to, uh, to um, I guess, support mining projects in, in their jurisdictions, I think it's uh, important that the, it's being managed by uh, experts in, in the field and try to, uh, as much as possible, to uh, avoid uh, political influence. Uh, I, I think uh, from, from our side, uh, I think that the government uh, has uh, given IQ the mandate to uh, to uh, support mining projects, but it's being developed with uh, for, from people that uh, that know mining industry, the, the mining industry. So I, I think that's uh, very important. Uh, I would say uh, that are my uh, on top of my head uh, the, the few uh, tips that I would give. Um, so happy to hear my colleagues on this. Thanks, Paul. Maybe over to you. Yeah, I'll jump in there. It's a, uh, it's a tough question, Frank, because, you know, you, you can, you can put the, uh, you can put the criteria on paper, 
right? I mean, we've had calls at CDEX from uh, Ontario and Saskatchewan and BC. We've had calls and say, like, how, do you, how did you guys do it? We'd like to do it. So we, we were happy to help, right? But <clears throat> I think there has to be a culture there, you know? I mean, and, and, and you, there has to be a culture in the province to, or, or we're talking within Canada, but even if you go internationally, there has to be a real willingness. You asked a question before about governments, the, 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 you know, the important role governments play in establishing these entities. And it's, it's crucial because unless you have a, a, a culture that, that really wants to do this, it's, uh, it's gonna be tough. Right. Even uh, I, I could easily tell Ontario how we set up CDEX, but you, they don't have a phone study that you and they don't necessarily have a government that, that has a, a sympathetic ear to it. You know, so it, it, there really has to be a, a concerted effort, um, you know, at the government level to, to, to establish the kind of ecosystem we have. I mean, Emil brought up an interesting point. I mean, governments change, but you know, our ecosystem has only gotten better. You know, we've only built on what we've created and put the building blocks in place over 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 time. And we're stronger now than we've ever been in terms of, you know, uh, being able to, to, to help out the mining industry and create a, a and foster a culture of, of willingness to, to have a mining industry. But it's just got to be a buy-in, you know, at the government level. And we have it. Um, how, how do you instill that in other provinces? That's a tough one. <laughs> I mean, they have to want it themselves too, right? That's a very interesting point. Yeah. Yes. Well, Paul, Paul kind of stole my line because <laughs> the, the, the point that I had was to, to, to promote a culture of collaboration and, and to, to encourage uh, all people of, in, of the industry to work to, 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 together to, to, to bring investment, but to also, uh, and you as, as said it, what do you have to offer? You have to know what you have to offer uh, at first. And, and when I say collaboration, you have also to keep in mind that you want to, you want to avoid single-minded mindset. You have to have a diver, diversity of, of different ideas around the table. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a balance between, I'll say, collaboration and and, and diversification of, of, of ID, it's important to promote that. And, and if you want to attract investors or you want to, to build a, an ecosystem around the mining sector, make sure that you have a complete financial network that can support all the stages, not only exploration, but if you find something, will you be able to, to advance it to, to development and then to production? It's, not, it's easy to say, but maybe sometimes could be hard in some jurisdiction, I think. Exactly. What about Angie? What do you think from a private investment banker perspective? Well, maybe my, my two cents. It goes back to what what you what you said in your opening comments, Frank. I mean, you set the stage for how important economically the mining sector is to Quebec, which then kind of um, you know kickstarts why is it so important to us than the cultural alignment uh, to to make it happen. So we talked about self fulfilling. We're a very mature model here. So getting something started, you know, you have to pick one of the one spot on that on that you know. Um, ecosystem to, to kickstart and then everything else falls into place. But also what Serge was saying about complementary, I mean, the funds have different mandates. Um, they are overlapping to some extent, but we have a variety of tools that all work in cohesion uh, for the ecosystem to, to go forward. So if a new, you, you know, and this happened in, in real life, you know, um, somebody advising Manitoba called me and said, how can I talk to CDEX? And you put them in touch with each other, but still, where do you start and what is the um, it's it's that I think is the, the hardest, um, the, you know, to get the momentum going. You have to pick a single area of focus to get everybody aligned, have access to the funding um, and then make it important to everybody. So sounds easier yeah. than it is. <laughs> yeah, I believe probably about, you know, having uh, government support in this culture. I think the importance of a culture we talked about. Right. I mean, I've told this story to you before, but. I mean, I've been in front of ministers, mine ministers, who've looked at, let's say, the, C the structure of CDEX, which was, we'll say, a joint venture between the Fonds Solidarité and the government. It's a $100 million fund, and they invest in the diversification and support projects that are very risky. And the minister was just scratching his head. He says, how are you able to convince you know, government officials to, to, to in and make investments that are so risky? And I think it all goes to the, I think it all goes to the culture, right? Because we understand that the need to do that and because it, you know, it's, it's part of the business. Anyway, that's, that's my two cents worth of, just to, to tag along on what Paul has said. Um, 
I've got a question here, maybe probably in, uh, I probably already know the answer, but to ask, is there any Quebec funds that invest in exploration outside of Canada? I think I only know of one, and he unfortunately couldn't make it today, is uh, Stéphane Poitras. The case of Depot, I think, will invest in projects outside of, of, of Quebec, but uh, I, I think each of, each, in, each of you, yes, Serge? Well, uh, in theory, I can do it, Frank, but for now, we are focused mainly on exploration projects located in Quebec, but we finance companies that are based outside of Quebec, any part of the world, Australian companies, American companies that, that want to do exploration in Quebec. That, that the trend that we took at the farm. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm you and Paul, I mean, the answer is no, I think for each of your respective funds. So I don't think we need to, uh, to uh, you know, I'm getting a comment from somebody who's, uh, he says, present in Manitoba, Northwest Territories and in Ontario, and very interested in this model that we've explored today. Uh, Bimi, our last question, it's probably, I don't know if this one comes from a, either somebody looking to invest in Quebec or somebody that's already in Quebec and looking to see what your answer is. The question is, well, you know, what's, what's the future for, for, for in, your, in your opinion, what's the future for mining in Quebec and how, how do you think the funds, uh, your respective funds are going to contribute to it? Amir, well, you want to start? Yeah, I think, well, the future is bright. Uh, you have uh, Paul mentioned that we've come up uh, we're the sixth uh, ranked position and we're aiming for number one. But uh, no, I think the, the future is bright. Uh, we, we have the expertise. It's been developed over a number of years. Uh, there, we have a bunch of minerals that are available uh, and, and a vast territory that has uh, not been explored. So there's definitely opportunities there. Uh, you see uh, new minerals today with the battery uh, value chain that is being developed. Uh, uh, we have uh, wearers, we have all the minerals, so uh, and we have the ecosystem. So, uh, and like I said earlier, the governments, whichever the color, they're supportive of mining. So I don't see that trend uh, changing uh, in the coming years. And, and so for me, future is bright. I'll jump in there, Frank. I mean, I agree with uh, I agree with uh, Amio. I think the future is bright, but with uh, with uh, the the proviso that you know we have to keep keep innovating and looking ahead because uh, what worked uh, 10 or 20 years ago doesn't work today necessarily right and so we have to be it from a geological perspective uh, we have to go outside the boundaries whether it's from a you know a marketing perspective with with the with the, the battery materials we have to think forward we have to think partners we have to think on a world scale you know on a global scale everyone has its uh, every sort of niche has its challenges and we can't sort of sit on our laurels. We have to really look look ahead and 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 keep, keep you know innovating. Yeah, you want to? Well, I also see a bright future, but I'm quite cautious when everybody thinks that it will be uh, that bright because <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm afraid of a market high. But I don't think we're there yet. I think that we have a, a good uh, a good environment, a general environment for the commodity prices. Coming ahead, I, I won't say uh, more than one and a half to two years. It's hard to do projections, but even if the markets would, would retreat, the, the fall would still be there. I'll say it in my introduction. We were there when the times were tough. We will also continue to be there. I hope my organization will still be part of this of this sector. Paul said it. Uh, we have to be aware of new technologies. It goes fast. There's things. There are things that, that are being developed around the globe that could impact us, especially our, our drillers, our geophysic uh, guy. And we have to be aware of, of, of those technologies. We hear about the mine of the future, the 4.0 mines. Uh, technologies are coming. So we have to be aware and, and, and to try to, to, to support those initiatives. We, I, we see great value in, 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 in those area in the future thing. And that is, uh, I think we will be willing to support innovation initiative in the mining sector. Thanks, Seth. Angelina, your um, So, Okay, well, maybe if I could jump off of what I saw last year, right, in terms of all the financings that we did, um, mostly mostly gold, obviously it was a historic year for gold and gold pricing. Um, what's, what's, what's ahead in the future? I see a shift, um, you know, not 
obviously not um, not not gold as much, uh, but it'll always be key to here in Quebec. But the move to critical and strategic materials, we talked about innovation, we're talking about AI, we're talking about ESG. So we're you know uh, oftentimes innovation um, is is uh, is is driving the ESG or and vice versa. So they, they're they're intricately linked as well, and then they're not only tied to to gold and base metals. So we're talking about all the other materials that we that we um, that we've discussed today in the panel. So that's what I think is happening here in Quebec. Um, I also think another key theme is consolidation. We have seen a number of M&A activities in the last year, and I think that's only going to continue um, in, in Quebec. Uh, I also think that we've seen an influx of new capital and new players, big ones here in Quebec that we haven't seen before, and I think that's going to continue. Um, I, I said a couple of times we've seen an influx of, um, of Australian capital, uh, you know, playing on the, um, the charity flow-through model, but also just generally taking uh, interest in assets here. Um, there is a, a, a difference in or an arbitrage, if you will, in value in terms of how um, uh, companies are perceived on the ASX and the TSXV. And so um, there's some advantage to be taken of that. And finally, big companies, for example, uh, BHP coming in and investing with Midland, um, that's not going to stop, right? I think that we really have a jurisdiction here that um, has the right risk tolerances for larger companies uh, that are now happy with their balance sheets coming out of this downswing and uh and now we're looking to, okay. to invest uh, and we're Great. open and ready that's well yeah well that was a good closing remark angie uh we're at 1 uh it's, it's done uh listen i want to thank all of you uh, there, when i thought about wanted hosting the seminar is because i wanted people to see exactly you know what's this ecosystem about how is it you know how was it created why and all of you you know how, how do you collaborate and and, and, and what are the, what are, what's the ABC are trying to put something together? I, I hope the audience appreciated the answers today. I certainly appreciated our discussions. I thank you again, each of you for accepting my invitation. And I hope we get to do this again in person soon. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Frank.